How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and the question today that I want to address is what are these little ears here that you'll find on all outlets and light switches? Now whether your outlet or light switch has Mickey Mouse looking ears like this, more of a squared off ear with multiple different cut lines, or even the super fancy Eaton ears that have integrated wire strippers, all these designs are going to serve the same purpose and they most commonly come into play when your electrical box is something like this, which is a new work box that's been installed for decades and decades prior to the wall surface like the drywall behind me is installed. So you have your bare studs, you sink in your two mounting nails here, you set this to a depth where it protrudes past the stud 3 eighths of an inch. So when your wall surface comes in, it is just on the outside of your electrical boxes by 1 eighth of an inch. And then your ears, which are more properly called plaster ears, coming from when most wall surfaces were plaster, will be mounted within your box and then just sit flush with the wall surface. Like this example here where I have two Decora light switches and you can see the top is sitting on the drywall. So this is gonna get a consistent mounting depth for these light switches. Then your faceplate is gonna sit tight to the wall surface with no gaps. Okay, so that's the purpose of the plaster ears. The issue is when should you not be using those ears? And that's when you have an electrical box called an old work box where you're gonna actually cut a hole in the drywall and then insert this electrical box after the plaster or the drywall is already on your wall, right? It's old work, it's after the fact. And this is actually where I've made this mistake for years and years. Even on my most popular video on this channel, it's about six million views. I have an old work box here and I start to mount the outlet and I actually missed one step because I left those ears in place. Why that becomes an issue because these little plastic tabs on your old work box actually sit on your wall surface. So if you just install your outlet with those tabs, now you're just slowly stacking up and pushing that outlet away from your wall surface. So then when your faceplate mounts to your outlet, you're probably gonna have a little gap on the outside. The nice thing is this is very easy to fix and all you have to do is with a set of pliers or your wire strippers, just break off those ears when you're using an old work box. When you break those ears off, now when you're mounting that outlet to the old work box, it's actually going to fit in a specific designed slot in the old work box so everything is flush to the wall surface and now your face plates will sit correctly. And then if you had a keen eye, you did see that last little bend or cut line. So again, we can just take our pliers and we can break those off, but this would actually come into play in the third type of electrical box in a little bit more of a commercial or industrial setting. So let me show you an example. So where this comes into play is something like this. So we have the smallest footprint of what's called that yoke now. And then that would come into play something like this, where you're actually mounting your outlets to the cover. This was a little mock-up I did to demonstrate reverse polarity a couple months back, but you can see that yoke needs to be trimmed down because you're gonna be mounting that and it needs to fit inside this cover. So then from the outside, everything protrudes as expected and you have a secure mount. So what about the holes, right? Independent of the design, whether it's square, super fancy wire stripper ears, or Mickey Mouse looking ears, they all have holes in them. Where that comes in handy is, let's say you have a new work box install, you're installing a new outlet, but the drywall is cut much larger than the box. So these small ears, plaster ears, do not actually rest on the drywall. So you can have what's called a sunken in outlet, something maybe looking possibly as bad as this one right here. In that case, because the plaster ears aren't serving any purpose, we could remove those, stack them up, and then put them on the back of our screw, which then would give us a little spacer on this backside. So when we mount it to our electrical box, it's going to 
push that outlet out and hopefully fix our sunken outlet issue, which could work. But honestly, with two of these, you're only looking at a spacing about a 16th of an inch. And most sunken in outlets that I see are off by more than 16th of an inch. Now, if you wanna know how to actually fix a sunken in outlet, maybe it's in backsplash or you're just an older home, you have a few like that, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through how to space that out when it's more than a 16th of an inch and also how to stay code compliant because there are some issues you need to make sure you're avoiding. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.